Today we are going to do a basic startup on the Worldwide Electric Flex Control Variable Frequency Drive. We have unboxed our unit, we have it sitting on our desk, and we now are going to apply power. Once power is applied, you will see on our display, it says start, easy, set. And you have the option to choose yes or no. For this video, we are going to use the easy start setup by pressing yes. In a later video, we will do a startup pressing no. Once we press yes, the next screen prompts us to a macro selection. This gives us options for basic, compressor, supply fan, and so on. If we scroll our arrow down, you will see more selections in which you can choose. For our demonstration today, we are going to use the basic setup. So we'll scroll back up to basic. And we at Worldwide Electric recommend for most applications, we use the basic setup. So we'll hit our enter button and now that will set us up for our basic applications. The next screen prompts us to select our Hertz via 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz. We're just gonna simply input enter for our 60 Hertz application. Once you do that, you will be prompted to this screen for motor horsepower. As you can see, it lists several different sizes. You choose the horsepower in which you are working with. In our situation today, we have a half horsepower motor so we will arrow up we will choose half horsepower and select our enter button rated current are our full load amps of our motor we are going to change this you can see 2.4 is what this unit is factory set at we can use our arrow buttons to move over to set our unit at 1.6 again we must hit the enter button to store our units Rated voltage. My rated voltage on my VFD today is 240 volts. So we will use our arrow key. We will go up to get our desired 240 volt setting and hit our enter key. Number of poles. We're asking the RPM of the motor at this screen. Factory default is four pole, 1800 RPM. You can arrow down and get two pole 3600 RPM, or you can arrow up to get six pole 1200 RPM, eight pole, so on and so forth. For our motor today, we are a four pole 1800 RPM, so we'll select four and mash our enter button. Input voltage, again, we put 240 volt as our voltage earlier. We want to match our 240 volt here in this screen as well. Hit enter to do that. Our restart function. As you can see, we have a couple of bits on our screen. The right bit is flashing. In the restart mode, the right bit on this side that you see flashing is under voltage. Currently it is set in the off position. So if our unit had a under voltage, it will not restart. We can change the bit and if we had an under voltage, it would then restart itself. In our, in our situation here, we want zero restart, so we're gonna put it back to where it was. The next bit that you see to the left is all other trips if we wanted to restart. Again, factory default off. If we wanted to change it, we simply use our arrow up button to change it, and all other trips would then automatically be reset with this application. For what we're doing today, we're going to turn that off. If you have any questions about this parameter, please see the instruction manual. We're going to hit enter to save ours. If you have zero, if you set zero for your automatic resets, you will see zero pop up. If you do want to have resets, you're able to change that reset by going, mashing the arrow button up. And this is how many times the motor would try to reset itself. Again, we do not want any automatic resets, so we're going to put ours at zero. Now we hit the enter button to make our selection. Power on resume. So if our power went off, 
and then power is applied back on, do we want our motor to turn on? In our case, we do not want our motor to turn on, so we would hit no. If you did want power on motor resume, you would select yes. Please see operation instruction manual for more details on this selection. Speed search, also known as catching a flying load in fan applications and pump applications. As you can see, the bits are set for off. If we go up, we could set that bit for on. And now we could do speed search or catch a flying load. For our application today, we're going to leave this off. There again, please see the operation manual for more information on this parameter. Command source. This is where we're actually going to get our command or how we're going to source our command to the unit. Today in our operation, we are going to be using the keypad. So we'll scroll up. We will select keypad and hit our enter button for our command source. Our frequency source, again today, we're going to be using the keypad. If you wanted to use a speed pot, we would simply slow down, scroll down and select two, and then we could actually wire a speed pot or a potentiometer into our VFD. But for our selection today, we're going to be working with the keypad. We're going to hit enter to select the keypad. Now we're at our home screen or our frequency mode. This is where we must input the frequency that we want our motor to achieve. Today we want our motor to achieve 60 hertz base speed operation. So we're going to input 60 hertz. And as you see, as we press the button up to the hertz, it's changing the RPM in which we selected in that four pole motor earlier. So we'll hit enter to store that unit. Now we've done a basic setup. This unit is now ready to run. We're going to hit the hand button to first start. And now you will see our motor is starting to come up in speed. This unit has a three line display. You can see Hertz, RPM, and Amps on the screen all at one time. We are continuing to accelerate to our 1800 RPM motor. As soon as we get up to speed there, you guys can see it. Now I will simply hit the off button to turn it off. Now you guys can probably hear my fan on the drive running on the video. So I'm going to go show you guys how to do a drive fan change. We are simply going to see our motor come down. We're going to go into our mode button. And you can see it says parameters, PAR, and then DRV. For us to set our fan mode, if we refer to our manual, it says our fan mode is in our ADV parameters. We'll scroll across till we find ADV, and that's our advanced group. So in our advanced group, now we're going to scroll down as we go through to AD64. As we scroll down, we also, in this drive, have a jump parameter as well. So we can easily jump down to 64, which we'll show in another video. So we're going to AD64. As you can see, it says Fan Control. We're going to go into our Fan Control menu. And right now, you can see it's always on. We're going to change that to temperature-based. If our drive gets hot, we will turn the fans on. And now this will quieten them down for our video. There we go. So we're going to point back up to the little arrow. You see ADV in the left-hand corner. This is pretty important. This is how we access or get into all our advanced parameters. So if we hit our right arrow key, you will see it went to CON, which is our control group. And inside of our control group, uh, some parameters in there you can scroll up and down. But one, one, a very important one to notice is our carrier frequency which is 04. We'll scroll down to 04 and highlight that for you there. Our carrier frequency in this VFD is set at 3 hertz, kilohertz. If you guys have any type of motor noise or need to change it to uh, quieten your motor up, you can simply enter into that parameter and change it via using the keypads. Let's go ahead and change that in our setting to 4, 5 kilohertz. That would be great. We'll hit our enter button to store that unit. Now we look back up at the top with our cursor in the left-hand corner where it says CON. 
we're going to hit our right button again, and now we're gonna go into our IN terminal. So it says IN, that's our input terminals for the drive. If we scroll over again, using our button, you will see the OUT, which is our output terminals of our drive. We hit the button over again, and you can see the COM, which is our communication group. This is where we can set up to use our Drive Pro software. This is free software on our website. You can visit our website at worldwideelectric.net. To use this software, we must scroll down to COM28. And we're going to select COM28. And then we have to come up and select the Modbus RTU. Once we make those selections, now we could communicate to the VFD with our Dry Pro software. We're going to go back over to our right arrow button. And as you can see, every time we do that, now we're into our PID mode in the top left-hand corner of our screen. And this is where we would set in our transducers. So if we had a transducer or we're running something in our PID mode, this would be the screen that we go set that up in. Moving over again with our right button, this is our AP1, our advanced parameters, also working in, in, in conjunction with our PID mode. We scroll over again right hand, now we're in AP2, which is our uh, advanced parameters two, and inside of this you would find our pump clean software. So we scroll down with our arrow, we can scroll down and you guys can look and see our, we have our pump clean software into the AP2 features here. You see the pump clean software there. We scroll right over again with our cursor. Now we're to AP3, and this is where we'd find our timers and our calendar to use and set up in our AP3. Scrolling over again, we in our PRT, which is our protection group. We could go in and do our phase loss, backspin, uh, our protection group for the unit there. Moving over to the right again, we're in the DRV group. And we're going to jump into our DRV group here. This is, the, this is where we could find like our XL time, our D cell time. When we started up the drive a while ago, you seen it took a long time for us to get up to our 60 hertz. So we're going to go in and show you how to change our Excel time. The factory setting, as you can see, is 20 seconds. We're going to change that, get it up to speed a little bit quicker. Let's make that 7 seconds. Using our arrow keys, we're making our selection to 7 seconds. Hitting our enter key to store that. And let's look at our D cell time. And let's bring that down. Factory defaults 30 seconds there. Let's bring that thing down in about 10 seconds. Let's get that uh, motor down to speed in 10 seconds. Hitting enter there again to save that. Now we made those selections. We go over to, back to our escape key. And we get back to our home screen. Now we're able to operate the VFD again. So we're going to mash our hand button to give it a run command and you can see now that our dry, our motor and driver are making a faster acceleration time than we did in our quick start setup. Now our motor is up to speed, we're going to show you how to change the hertz. So if we simply want to change the hertz on our unit, we're going to change that 60 to a 50. Maybe we want it to be 56 hertz. We simply are going to move our cursor over move that up to 5.6 and now our motor is going to follow our command to 56 hertz. As you guys can see this is a very easy drive to set up very user friendly. We're going to hit our off button and watch our decel time that we set in there bring our motor down to speed. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you find it educational. If you have any needs at all please visit our website at worldwideelectric.net or for our tech support, please call 844-WWESERV. Thanks and have a great day.